Watch it, watch it. You're standing on it. I know I am. Alright, we'll call the meeting to order at 634.
I'm probably not going to be able to go for probably another two months without knowing where they got up where I am. I wasn't planning on going to be purchased since we had to get it out of the dealership. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope to get all the bugs out of the new truck. It's been back to the dealership a couple times, so. Really? Electrical issues, but it was combined between when they put the body on, so they had a couple cross wires driving down the road and back up a line and go on. Wow. Hmm. Middle of the night people don't appreciate that too much. Mm -hmm. And you can't shut it off. <laughs> uh, then the PTO stopped working. They were switched that we're going to give out half the power, so they ended up swapping that out. So, but we hopefully get the bugs out of it now. And it seems a warranty, right? Oh, it's not, nothing costing us except for the time to run it back and forth to the dealership, either yeah. London area or Chichester. So. Yeah. The one, yeah. yeah they don't do, I mean, it's. They came to us the first time when it was, mm -hmm. you know, but they said it's not that it's time consuming. Electrical is always time consuming. Mm -hmm. So, other than that, uh, I'm waiting on pricing on sidewalks. We can talk about that pretty soon. Right? Are you going to start getting quotes for paving? Well, uh, the one the for project Sligo. that Sligo Road is, it, is going to be about 10% more than last year's. Is what the price is. Nothing final yet. Wait and see what the budget is, and then we'll call Chris and have him come. So we can get on top of it the first of the year again. Right. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it, it worked out last year, and that we were slated to have that done early. It didn't work out that way. Well, we, because of the weather. Right. But at least having them on board instead of waiting till October this November to do a project. Okay. Fingers crossed that nothing until we get a budget and not take all the time. Regional Planning's meeting last week, um, promoted by Strata Regional Planning and um, Northeast Resource Recovery Associates, Rollinsford's really hitting the news as a progressive recycling community. A lot of people are not um, taking the initiative to try to save, and so they're, it's being talked about, and so um, people are following up with Ed, trying to get more information and so the radio show is one example of that. It's a small local Portsmouth station that wants to do a one hour presentation. So Ben and I are going to go do that a week from Friday. And then um, in May is the conference of the Northeast Resource Recovery Association and they've asked Ed to do a presentation there nice. about what we've been doing here. Nice. So that's really exciting. Cool. Now let it talk a little bit. I know that you trash talk is something that you really like to do. They're composting and all of that. <laughs> it's his, it, yes, it's his, his show. It's his show. <laughs> the meeting last week was very, very informative and trying to get these other towns get on board joining, you know, trying to get together and do things together and really study. Stop in the trash and go where we shouldn't be going. Mm -hmm. You know, so hopefully we can get something out of that. But. Good. Wow, that's, that's awesome. I'm really trying nice. to get a conversation going regionally about it. Um, Senator Waters is proposing legislation that would bring back some money from our tipping fees because um, some of that goes to the state and bring some of that revenue back to the community so that we can invest in some kind of infrastructure that could help regionally. Like, you know, it could be a, a glass crushing machine, it could be an incinerator, it could be any kind of whatever that we could use either individually or as a region. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a really complicated problem, but every has, everybody, all the communities have something that they could potentially lend. You know, we have a little bit of land, mm -hmm. we have some equipment, mm -hmm. Summersworth's got a little bit of land. Dover doesn't have land, but they have, you know, a lot of waste and the 
resources to look into options. Mm -hmm. And you know, I just think if we work together, we could find a way to do something better within the next few years, and at the very least, plan for the inevitable closure of um, the lamp, uh, the waste management landfill, mm -hmm. because that capacity is finite. So mm -hmm. we should be planning on what the next thing is. And yeah. after our contract, you know the prices are going to go up. Uh, so we, yeah. we, you know, we have to stay on top of it. Now, is Dover's off of Mass Road? Yeah. Um, well, so that's where their community services building is, and that's where you go for hazardous waste day. But they don't have the land to be doing what we're doing as far as recycling is going. I don't think there's stuff there. They, I, I don't know why. They do have a demo. You can bring your demo stuff there. You can bring your demo, your TVs and stuff. Yeah. There. But they don't have the full, you know, they do roadside recycling. Oh, that's why. Right. They just renewed their single stream. Yep. Okay. Um, recycling for an increase of a, a million dollars to their budget. Mm. One year. Wow. One year, a million dollars. But their city council wanted to continue single stream. Mm -hmm. Summer's worth, I think, their 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 projects at the summer. So it's a good time to keep talking about it because you know we need those communities because we don't have the volume because we're small. Right. So if we work together, you know, we could benefit from their volume. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah. Charge them a tipping fee and then you know, make the money on plastics and stuff like that. Doing well. I'm very happy about that. Yeah. Good job. Right. Thanks, Jim. 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 Thanks,
I mean, so, how do you get that to stop? So, so the, the door needs to be replaced. Exactly. The, the whole door? The, the, or the, the motor? The motor. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. the door is supposed to draw no more than 8.4 amps. Mm -hmm. It's drawing 22.1. Okay. Is that happen when something starts to fail? Is that the what happens? It's all okay. tired and yeah, it's trying to make up for that. Drawing more juice to try to operate. Because that was my thing. Well, I'm just going to 25 and over 30. You can't do that. Okay. So that's why we had to replace and start a new with that end of it. And he did, he tested the other two doors also. Mm -hmm. And those two are fine. They're only drawing the 7 to 8 range like they should. Are they newer? No. These are all, they the, the, all the old buildings. They're all the old building. They're all the same age. The two where the car is and where the utilities sit is fine. Of course, the one with the forestry is the one that uh, is no longer working. And they fixed the one over the tank. But those are the two that are giving us problems. Is it because you don't use the other doors as much? Is that well, what would make, if you're using them all the same, what would make it not be that way? The, the doors were purchased in 1973. Mm -hmm. They were all past their, or their openers were 1973 is when they were. Have you ever been replaced? From the no, I'm saying that you don't, you have two that are working fine, and then you have two that aren't. It's what a, would, is it's it electrical the amount? Motor. Oh. Yeah, I don't think it's used to draw. I think it's just left in the drawers to which one decided to draw. So yeah. I think it's crossed at the end of this day. <laughs> For a while. The other, the other two, we've already had overhead door in early this year because the mm -hmm. two receiving and sending units won't work. Okay. So they rewired both of those. So we know that part of it's working. And now we've had tested so the electrical side is working. So let's, again, just hope that it stays that way for a little while. So with that being said, on the other two doors, um, we had an overhead door company come back and look at both of them. They suggested that you need to replace them. As Sean said, they were, they were up there since 1973. So our original thing was only going to replace one. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that had the fire in it. And they gave us a quote on that 1580, which is here, and just a quote. But when we found out the dual problems, we said, well, give us a quote for two. So they've given us a quote for two. And I have a purchase order for that. It's 1811. And for two new door openers, remove the old ones, put these new ones up, um, rewire them, do everything they need to get them operating. It's $29.50. Uh, that's actually from the original quote, which for one was $15.80, to the $29.50, they reduced it by $210 for two of them. So that's where we're at with that. And as I kind of said before, is right now the forestry door is disabled. We can't use it. So the only way we open it is manually. And uh, I'm afraid that somebody's going to do that, throw it back or something. So there could be some other injuries coming. So our suggestion, obviously, is PO number 1811. All right. But you can get two people to do it, right? What's that? People can lift the door, not just one, right? Yeah, but it doesn't always mean there's two people there to do it. Well, I'm right. saying, but I would oh, yeah. encourage that so you don't of get course. injuries until we get it fixed. Of course. All right, I'll move purchase order 1811 to overhead door company for $2,950 to replace two garage door openers. Second, all right. Any further discussion? So the solenoid for 374, that doesn't go to waste, right? Doesn't get thrown out. That was one of the ones, that was the one that got burnt out. That's that whole unit is being replaced. Can we salvage that piece? Why not? We can ask them for that and just ask yeah. a new piece. It would be the same piece that could go on if one of the other ones right. had a failure. Right. So if, if that's the case, then it may be replaced by the end of the week. If that's the case, just say if there's some, anything I had salvageable that we may be able to use for the other doors, yeah. mm -hmm. we will request that. We'll just keep it in the station. Mm -hmm. <coughs> At least the cell one. The cell one was not big money. It was because that was an emergency call. The labor rates were cut. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Oh, so it's not like a cell one, it's like 300 to 100 bucks. Okay. So you can't just run down to Sears and give it half, half horse. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> run down to Sears. <laughs> oh, there is no Sears. Oh, there is no Sears anymore. You're going to have to go somewhere far, far. far. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so no other questions? All right, so, and this is going to come out of station, station maintenance. All right, Aiden. All those in favor say aye. 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 So when we talk about station mates, you know, the door issues, uh, we probably spent $4,000 on doors since the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the heating issues that you're going to deal with comes out of the same line. Mm -hmm. So that line is going to be off the coast and exhausted. Mm -hmm. 
so we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. I have been, I have been looking at that for mm -hmm. not too good for this time. Not so much. So I think this is one of the uh, invoices that needs to go with the first PO. Do you have the other one with it that I give you that? No. Nope. No. The guys, the parts were supposed to be coming in uh, today, if not by then, be tomorrow. So we're going to try to arrange to have this done by the end of the week. So we're a little bit ahead of the curve on that part. Okay. okay. Um, well, the next thing is uh, our heating issues. Which we've got on. I would suggest yes. that we go this time. Okay. Can I have a motion to go into non coupling? I mean, motion to go into non coupling to discuss the heating issues. I'll second it. Okay, we'll call Jessica. Jessica, here. Yes. Can you see it? Uh, it's not working. 6.53. It's 6.53. Yes, it's sharp. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at it. No, it's not there. So the lights are on upstairs. You can see them from so, outside. Huh. All right. Oh, creepy. Okay. Uh, one of the purchase order. Simo Electrical for needed electrical upgrades at the bar station, uh, number 1818 to the amount of 24-7. Wait, 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 wait. What okay. time did we get to start? 7.54. And it's uh, 7.54. That's 54? That's what my phone says. Oh, you mean come back out. Come back out of the Oh, did she, she said what time did we get started, though? Oh, oh you mean no. now? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I thought you might want the first one out. Okay, all right. One hour and one minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you only have purchase order for Simo. Yeah, move the purchase order 1818 to Simo Electrical. Second day. Okay. But I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I rescind my second <laughs> For $2,470 um, for needed electrical upgrades at the fire station. Seconded. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 This is the one thing that was final uh, PO for this time. Again, that's going to be on the station maintenance line and with all the things that have been. We had worked the last few months that oil bottle was off that line. So we're aware, so we're all have to cross our fingers for the next nine months that we don't have a station. Agreed. Always have the holes Because that's one line that I've always kind of learned. So it's kind of hard to decide which person you can break. This year it's all front loaded, so we can start with the other one. That's all that we have for you. What do you have for us? Do you want me to keep this? This is a certificate of insurance from CAB. Do you want me to just hold on to that once we get further into this project, or would you like to take possession of this? What are they doing for you? These would be the people that would do tank removal. Um, I'll hold I'll on, or I'll give it to you. I'll take General, it. Whichever way you like to supply us with that so that they're all fully certified. That's their info. Okay. Thank you. Right, but I, I just, that's yeah. what I'm saying. If yeah. she wants to keep possession and go through this process, or we do what? Okay. Okay, we'll pile stuff for that going down. Very good. All right. Okay. Anything else? That's all we have. Nothing else? Okay. Thank you very much for all your hard work. Thank you. Good night. All right. But there's a purchase order? Yes. I'll move um, purchase order 1896 to the city of Dover for $700 uh, to replace tires on Cruiser 72. Second. Right. Any discussion? No. Okay. Do we know what the hold of this vehicle is? But this isn't, clearly this is not the one that would go away. No. Okay. No. Okay. No. And they were nearly bald. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Alright. Oh. 
gone, but we had pay structure on here. Was that just a holding? Um, you had wanted to talk about it. It's up to you whether you want to talk about it or table it. Um, yeah. Like, they're gone, so... Was that about... Um, um, okay, why don't we table it to the next, to the next one? That has to get in on public as well, right? Is that the pay structure? Getting yes, tabled? getting tabled, yes. Um, mm -hmm. Firefighters is non-public. Stipends, elected officials are public. Mm -hmm. Are we okay? Can you table it? Uh, yeah. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. Recreation. Okay, so you have a copy of the registration packet before you. The rec committee met last week and finalized this and have approved this to come before you. I didn't know if you felt the need to approve it or not. Um, the committee's been through it. It's, um, I would say, a, a pretty good revision. It does, you know, in, in the last sheet is a waiver. Um, they are hoping to get this out in the public tomorrow for election day and to open registrations on the 15th. So, um, should we have a COVID-19 contingency plan? For everything, potentially. I mean, for like for this, yes. so that we can say now, if, if something happens, we'll get you your money back or whatever, I don't know. It's a, it's a discussion, for sure. Yeah. What do you think the likelihood of schools closing is? Market closed. Market it's getting closer. My my work is very very concerned. Someone went to Italy. Did you see crew today? Dow Jones closed. Oh yeah. And that was crew. Oh my so. Today. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm okay. It's, I, I, I reviewed it. I'm okay with it. Um, there's been a lot of hard work going into this, and I think that um, I think we only can go with what we know today and, and getting it go through. And if things change that are out of our control, we will have to address that at the time. I, 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 you have a very valid point because mm -hmm. I, I think we're all in uncertainty about this, and, but I think that we have to. Well, I think I think it's worth having a plan. It's to you know the committee I think should discuss you know for the board's approval and recommend to the board what a plan might be, mm -hmm. um, and that's something that should certainly come in the upcoming meetings. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. You know, we should probably put a, a, a note. I can send a note to Kelly and just to make sure this is on the agenda and come up with some suggestions of what we have to do if if that if it happens. I mean. Uh, as it as it states here, the tuition fees are not refundable. So I don't know if we should offer a refund if there's a pandemic. There's a hand up in the crowd. There was a hand up. There wasn't one when I looked. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Put it back down with fear, I think. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. So it says funds are non refundable. That's after June fifteenth when registration closes. Okay. So I would think we'd hear way before then if we're gonna have some kind of a problem <laughs> yeah. just based on what is happening on a day to day basis. So, so even after the fifteenth if something happens within our own community, I would think that people would be appreciative that we didn't have that. Right. I, I I don't know. So much uncertainty with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my point is I don't think we need to offer refunds for something that that is may or may not happen, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I, yeah. 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 But I think something that we kind of have Press to put in it, that it would, you know, it will be beyond our control, and that we would have to be doing it based on what we were told by our government and whoever or our our, right. our state or there will be recommendations for sure. You know, so weekly yeah. about what's going on. Yeah. So I I would say we I would like to make a recommendation that we pass this to going forward so they can start getting their program um, up and um, this looks running great. and I think it looks good and um, really thorough. Yeah. yeah. They've been doing really a lot of hard work. Um, so I, I think we should make a motion to accept this and just so move. 
Yeah. Okay. okay. So, any other discussion? Okay. So we're making a recommendation to accept the registration package for the 2020 summer Columbus summer rec program. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. It is passed. So. Um, Compensation. Well, um, if we can go back one to job. I'm posting. sorry. You're right. um, there was discussion at the last rec meeting about whether or not the rec director position would be posted. Um, there's the rec. There's the summer rec director, and then there's the year-round rec director mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. um, the rec committee would like to hire the. Summer last year's summer rec director for the same position. Um, there's they would recommend that the board of selectmen hire. Yes, they're yes. not hiring for. But they understand that they they would like for that person to be hired for mm -hmm. for you for you all to do that. So um, that is before you. But I know that you at a previous meeting had wanted to post the. Um, I believe the committee, and I might be looking to the audience, um, was wanting to post the rec director position I'm trying to remember that I that I get this right. Um, you you had wanted to, to post the um, the part time annual position. Mm -hmm. They would like to offer that also to last year's summer person. So I would that, like to still post it. I'm not saying that it wouldn't be someone that we would consider, but I would like to have our options available. Okay. So um, that's, you know, so and I'd like to post it, but of course we are waiting until tomorrow to see where we were. Right. Well, we still don't have an approved job description right. for this year-round position right. approved by the committee and then approved by the select board. So that so, needs to happen soon. Okay. Yeah. So, but then it will be posted. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what, what is your recommendation to the board about hiring last year's summer rec director to continue as the summer rec director? I think consistency is, is a good thing and to having a, another person who was there last year to come forward. I think she did a really good job, so I'm not at all opposed to hiring her back if she's willing to come back. So I would say that we can, I would say we would recommend hiring or making an offer for her to come back. So would would you like to would somebody like to move in that direction then that we hire her for just put her name on for um, Melanie. Melanie Kent to um, return as the summer recreation director for the same salary as mm -hmm. last year. Correct. Is someone making a motion to that? I'm, I'm requesting okay. or yeah, suggesting a motion. Um, so, so moved. Second. Okay. So is there any discussion on that? Has, have we got confirmation that she's even interested? Yes. We have. Okay. So, um, any discussion at all? No. I, no? I think okay. she did a good job, yeah. and I, I agree that having the same person do it is only going to make things better. Okay. So, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So, motion is passed that um, we will, the select board will offer some I will get an offer letter, letter okay. for So, that will come from the board of selectmen. Yes. Okay. Now, what about the assistant director? Do we don't have a returning one, correct? We don't know that yet. Okay. Um, that person who did it last year is not sure what her plans are for this summer. Okay. So, should we post it? Yes. That was the will of the committee. That was the will of the committee? Okay. You can speak because we're talking about the yeah. you're on the right committee. Okay. So, I think we should post it. And if she decides that that is what her desire to come back is, she should get a, uh, um, in my opinion, she should get kind of a, not an interview, but a, a, she should be highly considered because she was a very good assistant um, director as well as working with the director. So she, we should take her seriously. Is, um, did, did their, does their employment terminate at the end of the summer? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're yes. temporary yes. positions. They're yeah. So they're rehired or not every year. Yeah. So, um, but we can, we we don't have a. Uh, we should at least post it, so we don't have to make it. And that job description will be the same for last year. So if there's exactly. no objection, we can post it the same way. Okay. And so also counselors. Um, they, there was I saw there was a request for the counselors to be uh, made offers. Again, though, that has to come from us, not from them. 
Understood. Okay. Yes. Do we have names of who they want? Well, you had you you and I had discussed having um, the rec director's input about that. So yeah, my and understanding is that the rec director that you just hired would be happy to have, I believe, five of those people okay. back. Okay. Um, so I just don't want them, uh, the, the, the rec committee members, to be offering positions. So oh, yes. once they decide, and with the information from Melanie, uh, the five that she would like to have come back, then we can advertise for the amount that we believe we need to have on top of the five, if they take them. Understood. I okay. think we got to wait on the counselors because there's still discussion about pay. So okay. let's meet with the rec committee again and get confirmation of counselor names and what the suggested pay rate is so okay. that you all can approve all that at the same is a time. deal. Yep. Yes. yep, that works for me. Okay. So that's what the compensation is. Is, well, it's that, but it's also, um, we don't need to, well, this is a board discussion as well as a rec committee discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and it, and, and for, for now, it's probably really with the rec committee, but um, compensation for the year-round rec director. Oh, this is the year-round one. Well, you know, <laughs> this all can, can apply to multiple scenarios with rec. Um, but the board, if the board wants to suggest something to the committee, ultimately the select board is going to approve whatever the suggested number out of hours mm -hmm. would be for this person and what the pay rate would be. Mm -hmm. You can wait for the rec committee to suggest or request that to you, or likewise you could, or conversely, you could suggest to the rec committee what you think is reasonable or a cap. And, and the reason, I, and, and you don't have to, I throw that out because um, there's discussion, you know, we brought up at the last meeting that they are considering rates that might be alarming to other staff working for the town mm -hmm. because they may, at the select board's discretion, have that entire team rec budget amount at their disposal. So depending on how many hours you think you're getting, mm -hmm. you could potentially pay some, you, you could pay somebody for a few number, a few hours at a bigger rate or more hours at a lesser rate, mm -hmm. um, but the rate needs to be kind of in line with what other people earn mm -hmm. around here. Um, so I want clarification. The, the part-time rec director will be reporting to the, you as a town administrator or the board of selectmen. It's not well, reporting to the rec committee. Well, you that's part of the rec committee, but it's not reporting to the rec committee. Th that's completely true, but uh, that's another thing that the board ought to be thinking about, that it's either me or the board. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's a part-time employee. It's it. So a, com a a committee is a committee. It's not a. Um, it's right. Not a, um, They're not. They don't. Well, not the sure they so. don't always get that. But they, I don't think they understand that. Well, it, it's been a recurring um, kind of question. It's mm -hmm. it's odd, and mm -hmm. and it's kind of problematic that they are kind of a volunteer-run department, and mm -hmm. it has its structural challenges in mm -hmm. that way. So, um, I think that we can discuss compensation as a ward later. Um, but well, let's see if the budget passes. Yeah, yeah. Well, that too. That too, yeah. So then we'll, um, so we can bring this up at the next meeting after the budget yeah. goes through and that's yeah. part of it. So. And I think that it's my opinion that we should be setting the rate and the hours. Well, right. you will be, but yeah. you can either do so after hearing their suggestion or that's you fine. can... But yeah. not, it, it's suggestions to us, but we are the right. decided factor. So Absolutely. I just want to make sure that was clear. Okay, so we will keep that on there. Can you put next to it so we don't forget that it's the uh, part-time rec director? Um, yes. Um, approving and posting registration packets, that's what we just did. Yes, you yeah, did that so already. that's good. Okay. So, and was that all the other, that's all the things that we, so we are going to get the, um, the assistant rec directors posting out. Yes. And see, I mean, and she certainly has and she, every right to apply yes, for it. Yes, and they'll be encouraged to apply and just 
just in case she's not interested. And then we'll wait until Melanie accepts the other one, and then we'll have a conversation between her while you and me in the in the rec committee about who we're going to recommend carrying forward to the board. Yes. And we should do that soon so we don't lose potential people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Very good. Agreed. All right. Any other questions about rec? No. Yes. No. no. Okay. Okay, very good. Um, Stormwater Asset Management Engineering Firm. So we did the request for qualifications as we were directed to do through this process for the SS Asset Management grant that we've been approved for. Of course, nothing can really happen until we find out whether it passes tomorrow, but I am looking for approval from the board to move ahead with an engineering firm um, that understands also full well that nothing really happens if it fails tomorrow. So um, we received four requests for qualifications from, we, we request, sorry, we received two um, qualifications from, from two different firms, um, Hoyle Tanner Associates and um, Wright Pierce. Both have experience with the town, both have worked for both the town and Actually, I take that back. Right, Pierce has worked for the water district and not the town. HTA has worked for both the district and the town. Mm -hmm. um, both firms are very qualified to handle the project. Um, it's not a particularly complicated project as far as their skill sets go. Um, the Stormwater Committee reviewed the proposals over two meetings um, and last week um, agreed to go with Coyle Tanner. Mm -hmm. That is the select board's decision to make. They are requesting of you that um, we be able to move forward with Coyle Tanner. Okay. So sh should we wait until that warrant passes or doesn't pass? Or do, can we? I, don't, I, I would decide prefer now. that you decide and then okay. if and it then fails, then, then it, it all becomes yeah. moved and yeah. we don't do anything with it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. So looking for a motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll move that we. Um, Point higher. Um, Hoyle Tanner Associates for the Stormwater Asset Management Grant should it pass. Okay. okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Thank you. You're welcome. Town Election Select Board coverage. Um, so you, you started to coordinate with me what your availability is for tomorrow mm -hmm. and I just want to see if there's been any movement in that schedule. Um, mm -hmm. Suzanne Hewitt is willing to step in for any time that there isn't another board member present if you wish to delegate her to do so yeah. again. Mine um, is pretty firm of when I can. I will be there right after work but I can't leave early tomorrow just because of my, what's happening this week. Yeah, I was planning on being there 7 to 11.30. Okay. I cannot be there. You cannot be there. No. She can be there anyways, can she? She's on the ballot. Can she be there? She's not on the ballot. I know. She oh, is. you. You you can be there. You, yeah. um, you can be there. You just wouldn't have anything to do with ballots. You couldn't, mm -hmm. like, give out ballots or okay. help put them in the, in, the, in the voting machine or anything like can that. Can she count? No. No. Oh, you can't. Aww. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Go vote. Yeah, <laughs> sure. All right. All right. So, so that would leave an opening of oh, did you say eleven thirty to until five. about five? Okay. Yeah. That's fine. She said she yeah. was available to do that, so I will. Confirm. If for some reason I can get out early, I will, but I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, I just want to. Um, I, I left, um, I thought I had put welfare back on the agenda, but I don't see it there. I don't need, um, if we could do that in non-public along with the legal in number eight um, at the end of the meeting, okay. there's no action to come. I just want to give you an update. Okay. Okay. Um, policy review. Purchasing policy and ethics. Did we get an no. ethics market? Okay, so. You have not. So it's been a standing item there as a placeholder, but oh, I haven't found, a, you know, so I haven't found a good one. This is the
conversation about how you could have an ordinance. If you were to have an ordinance, it would have to go through town meeting, and that's mm -hmm. a way bigger, broader thing. Mm -hmm. Or you can have a policy. Um, I, I haven't yet found a good policy. Mm -hmm. I'm finding places that lean more toward an ordinance. Okay. All right. Um, it's 8.20. Do we want to be doing work on this policy? Um, not if there's a long discussion, but... I know yeah, if you were both, like, I thought at least one or two of you were, like, pretty, like, if you wanted to just approve it, if you're at that point, I yeah, don't know I how much discussion you think there going, is. I was going through it, uh, um, again, that's why I came in early to go through it, but, um, I am... Um, Would you like to give me your edits, and then I can share with the board a new copy? Oh, that's a possibility. Okay, why don't I do that? Okay. Um, I'll send you an email with what my post edits are. Okay. And then, um, yeah, that's that's good. Have you looked at it at all, Jessica? I have looked at it, yeah, and I, I like the way it is, but I'll wait and see your edits, too. Okay, very good. So I'll we'll redline it so you can see yep. what the changes are. Okay, very good. So we can, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, board member activities and updates. Um, the election, of course, mm -hmm. tomorrow. Um, I think I missed every other meeting I planned to go to, which was Stormwater. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't have anything this week, but election. How about you guys? No, there aren't anything. Except election. Yeah. Which I don't really have. So that's good, I guess. Administrator. Um, it's been very busy. There's been a lot, I've been sending you a lot of emails about nitrogen. Mm -hmm. There there was the public hearing with EPA and DES at DES a couple of weeks ago. There's been a lot of movement since then. The public comment period has been extended um, yes. until the beginning of April. So that part's good. I would encourage you all, if you wish, to respond in some way to that and you can let me know if you want help with that. I have a good draft going of my comments but they're going to be extensive and detailed and um, I still have some things that need to get incorporated into them because um, there's a lot to say about it. What, what was alarming about the public hearing is the lack of response from other small communities, and small communities are going to get hit dis get disproportionately harder than larger communities. Um, there's going to be an enormous, um, an enormous economic impact because of the cost of it. Um, Dover estimated that the additional sewer rate to the hospital would be $50,000 a year and $30,000 to Liberty Mutual. And so for, you know, for businesses that live in these 12 communities, mm -hmm. they have a high incentive to leave. And, and so that those rate increases would also be on um, the average, like the residents as well. And so if businesses leave, then that's going to increase the burden on the residents. So it also essentially stops growth because you're capped at nitrogen and any additional people would increase your nitrogen. So it, it's kind of a growth ordinance of sorts. It also denies people property rights to develop. There, there are some things about it that don't really seem possible. Um, so the communities are asking for a peer review of the science because DES and EPA are um, explaining, you know, calculating it costs to be very different from what the engineers and consultants working for these communities have found them to be. So that is of some concern. The other concern is that the nitrogen levels that they are requiring that we meet are um, going to put Great Bay at about ocean levels of nitrogen, um, which isn't necessary. That's extraordinarily low. And Great Bay, because of its unique character and its very tidal nature, could high, it could handle higher nutrient loading than other estuaries. And so it doesn't seem to be... So the marker, the, the, the canary in the coal mine that everybody's looking at is eelgrass and how well eelgrass is doing. 
Um, but it's not really clear that nitrogen alone is killing the eelgrass or that the nitrogen has to reach this low level that they're saying in order for the eelgrass to return. Um, so for that reason, um, the, those, the communities are trying to stay united and I would suggest that we stay part of that in, in requesting a peer review of the science so that if we're moving forward, we're re moving forward for a purpose that will have a proven result and meet the goal. So in any case, there, so there's a lot to say about written comment. I'm working with, on that. I'm working with other communities on that. I attended a meeting last week um, with our um, representatives from our congressional delegation who are going to EPA in Washington tomorrow on behalf of the 12 communities um, to talk about the peer review of the science and um, funding. funding. So what's interesting about this nitrogen permit is that it's an adaptive permit, which means that a community has to reach a certain nitrogen limit and it can do so through wastewater or it can do so through non-point sources or a combination, which is really great to have flexibility, but um, that would that has strange implications in Rollins for where the water sewer district is a different entity and we would be responsible for each other's numbers, but we can't really compel each other. And if the voters in one place don't approve something, then, then the ramifications for the other would be quite grave. So there are a lot of unanswered questions about that, but with regard to stormwater and what it means for the non-point sources in, um, in the town, what the town can manage is in retrofitting septic systems and um, banning fertilizer and reducing impermeable services. So there's not a lot about that that's really workable. You can't get on private property to retrofit people's septic systems. You can't compel them. You can't, you know, we don't have the mechanisms to find them. And it's going to cost between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars per septic system with no funding. To retrofit one? To retrofit for nitrogen. That's just so that's septic. You know, impermeable surfaces, you're going to unpave your roads, not likely. You know, you're going to tear down buildings. What do you do to reduce your impermeable surface? Um, cities and towns typically only control 8 to 12 percent of the land in their area. So again, there are private property implications that you can't, you have no legal authority to manage. Um, and then banning fertilizer, you know, so, so they would like for us to eventually pass an ordinance that bans fertilizer. Um, what are the ramif how do we test for that? What are the ramifications? Are we doing like drive by night, like soil samples? You know, it, it's, it's not really practical. But you're trying, um, I mean, you, you've got your farmers here too, so they wouldn't be able to use fertilizer either, is what you're saying, not just... Well, it, it all depends on how you write this ordinance, okay. but there are implications yeah. for them too. Yeah, exactly. But yet, I don't know how we're supposed to compel farmers, how mm -hmm. they're supposed, you know, how they're... They're part of this. Mm -hmm. um, and to some extent, EPA will manage them separately, but we also have some responsibility toward them too. But again, mm -hmm. they're private property owners, mm -hmm. so what are we supposed to do with that? It's not really clear. So the municipalities are united in, in being really confused in how this is supposed to be workable. So um, because of the enormous cost implications, um, Particularly, you know, they're not very sympathetic to the fact that the district is pretty maxed out in its debt limit and will have to foot the bill for another possibly $2 million or more in wastewater treatment upgrades. The other thing is, when you, you know, the opportunity cost. When you're putting all the money in one place, what are you not, what are you not putting money on because you have to put all your money in this one place? Mm -hmm. You know, Dover, you know, so pointedly said, if you gave me a dollar for wastewater upgrades, it wouldn't be for the treatment plant. It would be for the infrastructure in the ground. And how, you know, they get so much extra flow in the storms, and they know they're getting a lot of infiltration. Mm -hmm. That would be way more beneficial for them. They have really ancient pipes in the ground. But, mm -hmm. you know, so you can't do that if you're directing all this extra money toward 
these upgrades that they're requiring. So the cost is great, so I'm prioritizing that. Um, then last week, I got um, very anecdotally notified that um, we're in the public comment period for another EPA permit, which is called the general permit. Um, it's something that we had in 2003 and 2008, and we were supposed to renew in 2015 and didn't. So we're out of compliance and we need to apply for our 2015 permit. Um, and the new permit will come online within, you know, in about a year. Um, that has implications with regard to our landfill the transfer, and the transfer station. But then we also have responsibilities to um, figure out if we have any industries that operate in Rollinsford that are in any of the 29 regulated categories. Um, so that's going to be challenging because we know that there are some of these in the mill, but, you know. Mm -hmm. So I spoke to EPA this morning and I got the message that it's really just about trying. <laughs> but um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a lot and it's confounding. Well, to some degree it does, but, you know, that's, um, I, I'm not sure what that really means. And, and, you know, that's not what the regulations say. So, you know, where, where does it all settle, really? Um, so, my message for the board is that um, we're going to really need to pay attention to the closed landfill this year. And as much as you already know that there's not leftover money, given what's happening with our facilities, you know, we're going to probably have to start budgeting at least for what is it going to cost to get it surveyed and um, get an engineering firm out there to check it out and do some tests and things like that, which we're likely to have to do annually going forward. The transfer station, we're going to have to do things you know, it, it mostly around reporting, but we can. This, so, if we can, you know, if we can prove that the that, that the landfill was capped appropriately, then we can essentially say so and be done with its permit. It seems that doesn't mean that we're out of all of its regulation for DES purposes, but as far as the general permit for EPA goes, um, how are you going to prove that? with whatever the documents from the engineering firm that we would pay to go look at it. Um, the transfer station, um, we would be under regulation from that if everything was completely undercover. So what's promising, I hope, about that is that um, at Stratford the Regional Planning, when we were talking with um, one of the panelists was from NRRA, and we've gotten containers from them before and the scales through their grant program. Um, we suggested to him that it would be really helpful if their grant program funded Quonset huts because mm -hmm. the problem with recycling now is really about storage mm -hmm. and how um, roll-off containers and those kinds of containers are not very conducive to moving things around with a forklift. Mm -hmm. and he agreed, and there's a good chance that they'll redirect their funding and do Kwanzaa soon. Nice. Cool. So that would help a lot, and then that would also help for this permit. So mm -hmm. in any case, I've been quite absorbed in EPA conversations and um, trying to regionalize the waste, um, talking to communities, and communities talking to us about what we do and how they can do that. and. Um, we're, we're doing really well for right now, but we're not doing as well as we could be if we could capitalize on markets with volume. Mm -hmm. And we could all benefit from doing this all together. And, like I said, with the capacity at waste management being finite, we mm -hmm. ought to be planning for what comes next. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep that door open and moving.
The other news is that um, we know that there is a trouble spot um, on Locust Street going out to the river um, that, that we need to have camera those pipes that are oh, yeah. Yeah. likely collapsed. Yeah. It is the goal of the Star Stormwater Asset Management Grant to assess the, the structures under the ground, um, which would include that area oh. and those things. Oh, good. And so um, I don't want to promise that we can get it funded through the grant. Mm -hmm. um, but it may be that um, it may be that we can. The question is, if we if we make sure that we're focusing on all the cameraing or detailed cameraing, then we're sacrificing something else. Mm -hmm. So, um, j just know that that's potentially an option. There's also a different kind of cameraing that doesn't crawl, but it zooms, um, which is less expensive, and so that may be able to stretch dollars out. So. That is something that we absolutely have to do one way or the other. Right. Spring and summer, right? This year. Well, uh, well, we need to get it done. Cameron, yes. yes. But if we can get it cameraed through the grant, so and, and maybe we can't because maybe the timeline's not going to work, and maybe yeah. we need to get it done before the grant money can make it happen. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but I'm kind of hoping we can make the best use of dollars there. Okay, good. good. No, we should at least do it before winter comes again. Um, I'm hoping that we're going to have a plan to remediate some of it even this year, you know, because we don't want to go, we were lucky with a mild winter that we didn't lose that road. Yeah. But if we had last year's winter, we, we might have, you know, we're, we're, we're going to lose the road at some point, mm -hmm. potentially, if we don't fix that problem. Yeah. So as much as we don't want to do that now, mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, how much we can accomplish. Once we get an engineer to look at it, we can try to determine if there's a part of it that we can do. Likely you have to do the whole thing, and I don't know that we can afford that, but mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see when we when we get there. Okay. That's, all I have. That's it. Okay. Um, community input. Okay. Right. Do we have any folders besides um, those are Awesome. There are things in there, yes. Thank you. Not to belabor it, though. Um, purchase order yep. number 1817 to Lavelle Computer Services for 10 hours of IT services for $760. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. Uh, purchase order number was one eight one six to All State Parks, New Hampshire State Parks Bus Pass Program Coordinator for ten passes, two hundred twenty five to uh, two hundred thirty five dollars total for Camp Raleigh. Um, I'll second that. Okay. Any questions? Bus pass, right? Okay. Right. There is um, ten, so in case we have to take two buses, we'll have enough. Okay. All right. Um, if you could also please sign the sheet underneath it, because it's kind of like a quote or right a contract here? or something. Okay. Yeah. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 That is all. that we go into non-public for RSA 91A, colon 3, section 2, letter, oh, it's an L or an I. It's an L. L for legal. Seconded. Okay, welcome. Jessica? Yes. Denise? Yes. Maya? Yes. 